note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Welcome back to another live stream with me, Gisela K. This is Grizzly True Crime, and today we're back to discuss Madeline Soto's case. Uh, I do have a playlist for you if you've never heard of this case before. Let me just pause this presentation as well. So we've gone over this presentation a few times before. So check the description box if you know nothing about this case. Catch up over there. There's videos, there's live streams, there's shorts and everything for you. Okay, today we're going to look at some updates. Uh, we haven't covered all the little updates that have come out in the last two to three weeks or so. So let's have a look at those, including, of course, Madeline Soto's father, biological father, breaking his silence and speaking to the media, which, oh man, it's so sad. I can't imagine being in his shoes. Thank you so much all for being here. Welcome mods, patrons, members, subscribers, all the new faces, any locals that are here. This is the suspect, but no one has been charged with murder yet in this case, right? So we're going to look at some clips because the state attorney explains that, the former chief explains that, and I did mention once in a live stream that there was a little clip that I saw where it was like a news reporter or someone said that this could take two years for anyone to be indicted on murder charges. And I'm like, two years, right? But I found the clip, so we're going to look at that, okay? We're going to look at that today. Uh, welcome to all new members as well. So I'm not going to go over the entire timeline again, okay? I'm pretty sure that you would know about this case if you are here. Again, I say if you don't, there's a case background in the description box for you, and there's the link to the playlist, okay? Because I don't want to waste anyone's time. Otherwise, people just say, get on with it, Gisela. Thank you so much, Eddie. Don't worry. I really appreciate it. Okay, so what I've got for you here uh, today is actually lots of clips that we're going to look at together, including, of course, the interview. So let me get that for you and make it bigger. I've made sure to boost uh, the sound as much as I can of everything we're going to see as well. And I've put clues on the screen like I usually would do with uh, trial days and things like that if you watch trials with me, right? So this is the state attorney, Andrew Bain. This interview was from April 3rd of 2024, just talking about how the investigation is going the charges and all of that. So you guys are all saying two years. I know, right? Two, two years. I mean, I don't know why two years. I don't know. That's a scary thought. If you have to answer why two years. Yeah. For a thorough investigation. I get that. But wow, it sounds like a big, big investigation, maybe involving more than one person. Am I right? Who knows? We shall see. Okay. So let me play this for you. Here we go. I have some other questions that I want to ask you about. Any update that you can give on the Maddie Soto case? I know when we spoke with Kissimmee Police yeah. at their last news conference, mm -hmm. they said they're still waiting on medical examiner's report. Do we have an update on that, how she was killed, where she was killed, any yeah. timeline of murder charges? Yeah, so we are working still closely with our justice partners and the Kissimmee Police Department to um, gather all the information that we can. Um, and so if we um, are able to, we will present that case and you'll have an update when um, we're able to speak about it. But no update on releasing any information about how she was killed. Yeah, so that's all good things that have to stay within um, the investigation is open and ongoing. Um, and so the integrity of our cases depend on um, that information not being readily available because uh, the last thing we need is all when we saw uh, with uh, cases where you have to go out and find jurors from different jurisdictions, you have to you know, bring in jurors to try a case because the case had become so well known to the people in the community that we can't present a fair trial. So we want to have, we want to be able to damn they're on on the ball already right they are preparing to obviously prosecute whoever is responsible for murdering 13 year old madeline soto this case is really disturbing it's really heartbreaking i'm sure you know already that stefan stone's the prime suspect he was named the prime prime suspect in madeline soto's murder although he hasn't been charged he's been charged with 60 other horrible horrific charges that i've actually read that document out to you before so if you haven't seen that and you want to check it out, go check it out on the playlist. But this case, it's it's so disturbing, right? My goodness. I can't wait until 
they finally charge someone with murder, right? Now, Stefan Stern's trial is set for May 13th of 2024. So let's see if it actually happens then. I wouldn't be surprised if there's delays, you know, always happens. But uh, if not, then he'll be on trial May 13th for those 60 other charges, which are sex crimes against uh, children, including Madeleine Soto. So the Canadian cat lady says, what did you think of their car ride he took when being transferred? We're going to look at all of that today. Here we are today to catch up on everything in this case since we last, uh, you know, spoke about it. Of course, there we've all caught up. Now there's been 911 calls, body cam of Stefan Stones being transferred from one jail to the other, and uh, all sorts of little updates like this. So that's what we're here to do today. So thank you so, so much for being here as we can watch this all together. I've got 25 minutes worth of footage that I've put together for you of all the updates that I could find. Present a fair trial. We want that case to be tried by the people of our circuit um, and the people of our circuit to determine what's the best result for that case. One follow-up. Is that a concern right now? I know when I spoke with uh, experts, they said because of the high profile nature Correct. of this case, it, it may have to be moved. Yeah, so that's exactly the reason why. So we, the less the less likelihood that we can, um, obviously we want to make sure that you are involved and that the public knows that we are working hard on the case. But when information and facts are, are like, you know, to be leaked and, uh, and things then take a turn, uh, where those type of things have to happen, where we have to maybe have change of venue, where we have to um, import a jury and uh, sequester a jury for a whole month or, or two months, depending on how long the case is going to take to present. And so it's a great cost to the, like, to the citizens because taxpayers are paying for that. And um, it, I think it really takes the out of the hands of the peers that should be trying the case. So the law wants you to look at you know, the peer, your peers should be trying the case, not somebody from a different community, somebody from your own community should be the person to people trying your case. He's sitting in the jail cell right now. And if convicted of child sex, now, here's the clip. Oh, my goodness. I was looking through all my history. Okay, even with the filters you can use of <laughs> everything I was searching for a while ago. And I'm like, where did they say that this could take up to two years? It has been bugging me so much. And I finally found it. I don't know if any of you are like that when you like, you know, have this thought, well, wait, don't I hear that again? And then you just don't stop until you find it. So finally, I found the clip where they talk about that this could take two years or something like that. There is actually another clip I'm still looking for. So if you know what I'm talking about, it was a news reporter standing outside of a, at the courthouse and saying, you know, that this could take two years. So let's just hear what it is. The reason I like to just inform ourselves, myself included, of course, with stuff like this is because we're like, why, why, why are there no murder charges yet? Like, this is so abnormal. It's taking so long. But these things take time, as we know, and they need to make sure that they have all the ducks in a row before they charge anyone or any people with murder so that they can fully prosecute them to get justice for Madeline Soto, which I really hope they will. I'm confident they will. Uh, Vanessa, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So nice to see you all here. Happy uh, Saturday to you. Six crimes he's accused of, Stefan Stearns could spend the rest of his life in prison, regardless of what happens in the investigation into the death of 13-year-old Madeline Soto. I don't think this case is going to go. And if the murder charges are added, uh, it, it, you're going to be a year and a half, two years away before this case comes to trial. Stephen Stearns. And there it was. Oh, and this clip, huh? this clip, oh no, of Jen Soto comforting this guy. The things they found on his phone, oh my. It's just like in hindsight, right, when you see this, it's like, oh no. But there you go. There, we heard it there. Okay, so... That's the clip I was looking for. The prime suspect in the disappearance of Madeline Soto is the boyfriend of Soto's mother. He was the last person seen with a 13-year-old. In May, he'll stand trial not for her disappearance, but rather dozens of sex crimes. If the defense is not ready for trial, which I don't think they will be, uh, at that trial date, they're going to move to continue to give them more time to examine the evidence. So far, investigators have examined enough for the state's attorney's office to charge Stearns with 60 counts of sexual battery on a child under 12 and lewd or lascivious molestation. Stearns has not been charged in Maddie's death as law enforcement continues to investigate and has yet to charge anyone. They're waiting for all of the evidence to come in so they can carefully look at it, analyze it and make a informed decision as to the murder charge. 
Now, former Chief Judge Belvin Perry presided over the Casey Anthony case. He says right now he's commending law enforcement for taking their time to go through evidence and DNA to find out how Maddie died, taking out anyone who's not involved in her murder and holding the person responsible without making any mistakes. Okay, I also quickly want to show you something. Just hold on, and then we're going to get back to all these clips. Just hold on. I don't want to mess it up. Don't lose my place now. Okay, it was this one. Yes. Here, the medical examiner said that they cannot release 13-year-old Madeline Soto's cause of death. So if you didn't see that in the last update, they did say that, um, which we thought as well, because shame, man. She's a minor. She had just turned 13. I see it widely reported as well that they say uh, she had turned 13 on the Sunday and went missing on the Monday. But she actually turned 13 on the Thursday and then went missing on the Monday, uh, according to the timeline. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just being nitpicky now. <laughs> Thank you, Mikhail. Am I saying it right? Mikhail. I hope I'm saying that right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So they said uh, the medical examiner's office says they cannot release the cause of death of 13-year-old Madeline Soto. The District 9 Medical Examiner's Office says her autopsy can't be released because she's a minor whose death was related to an act of domestic violence. Okay. And is therefore confidential and exempt from release. So there's a tiny little bit of information in that sentence, right? An act of domestic violence. David Thomas, a professor of forensic studies at Florida Gulf Coast University, said that is a standard for victims in cases like this one. I would say before the Gainesville student murders, they just about released anything. And then after that, the media went crazy. It was a media frenzy to get the pictures, Thomas said. They created laws to protect that so that information could not be released. It's just a normal course of business in order to protect victims. Madeline is the 13-year-old girl first reported missing on February 26th. My goodness. Okay. So, yeah, Dinah uh, Buck says 60 counts. Think about that. And times 10 because each count... Had 10 charges attached to it. Oh, my word, that is just terrible. Right, so now let's go back to the clips that we were watching. I'll have to just quickly resize it for you. Just hold on one second. And I've got 911 calls to show you and that body cam of Stefan Stearns, which I've just defluffed a bit, as I like to do, just so we don't have to watch him talk about cough drops. <laughs> okay, here we go. Tell me about your daughter. This is Tyler uh, Wallace. This is Madeline Soto's biological father. I've seen some reports on online, you know, just on reading things on social media, of course, to take it with a grain of salt, that he had actually fought for custody for Madeline, but didn't um, didn't get it or something like that. So, but he did, she did visit him and they were close. So um, he has a Facebook account as well. And he's here talking to the media, breaking his silence for the first time. So let's hear what he has to say. Maddie was... Uh just the most important person to my wife and I. Uh, she was just full of joy. Tyler Wallace had last spoken to his daughter on her birthday. He had no idea it would be the last time. How did you find out? I was informed uh, through the a phone call from Jennifer uh, that she was missing. What was her demeanor? Jennifer's. Uh, um, was she calm? Was she no, freaking out? I would say anxious. The next morning, he got in his car and drove from Texas to Florida, only stopping for gas. But shortly after he got here, Madeline Soto's body was found in this rural area of Osceola County. Her mother's boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, is charged with sexual battery and possession of child sex abuse material. He is the main suspect in her murder after investigators say Stearns is on video dumping her backpack and laptop in a dumpster in the early morning hours of the day Maddie was reported missing. Did your daughter ever indicate that something was going on in that house? Not to me, no. What did you think of Stephen Stearns? I had interacted with him on Instagram a couple of times loosely, uh, just kind of seeing if he gave me the ick or if he seemed okay. Sorry to pause it there. Um, Janie Child says, wow, she looks like him. I can go back if you want me to. I just want to show you as well. She really does. Chef, she really looks like her dad. There's some beautiful pictures of them together on his Facebook page as well. Um, there's Maddie, and this is her biological dad, just to be clear, so that everyone knows we're on the same page, what we're watching here. 
Okay, so one more time, I'm going to go back a few seconds here so we can hear what he what he thinks or what he thought of Stefan Stearns. Her mother's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, is charged with sexual battery and possession of child sex abuse material. He is the main suspect in her murder after investigators say Stearns is on video dumping her backpack and laptop in a dumpster in the early morning hours of the day Maddie was reported missing. Did your daughter ever indicate that something was going on in that house? Not to me, no. What did you think of Stefan Stearns? I had interacted with him on Instagram a couple of times loosely, uh, just kind of seeing if he gave me the ick or if he seemed okay. And as far as I was interpreting his demeanor, he seemed like a warm, interested, but like not responsive, very often person. What do you think of him? Warm, interested, but not very responsive. Interesting. I mean, people like Stefan Stones would have quite the mask on, right? Especially if he's grooming and abusing children. Yeah, he's got quite the act on warm and interested, you know, friendly, as people say, funny. Lots of people, we've seen lots of descriptions, right? Of course, we've had, <laughs> there's also phone calls from friends uh, that I'm sure you've heard on other channels, and it's, like some of them are like, no, he's he was a bit of a red flag, or he was a bit creepy if you think about that now, especially in hindsight, right? But, oh my. No. I don't want to say that on camera. I can't communicate to you. Every father knows what I'm thinking right now. Tyler met with Kissimmee police about their ongoing investigation. But do you think that Jennifer Soto knows more? I don't know. And I am I am interested in knowing, but... I don't have reason to believe one way or the other right now. These, these are the things that the investigators are looking into. And now he won't get that chance. Instead, he's here to take the little girl's ashes home to be with him now. Was Jen a good mother? I, I don't know how I can excuse this. I don't know how I can excuse this. I don't know the whole truth though. I need to hear more. I need to hear more to answer that question. How did you... Shame. But he answers extremely responsibly, you know, as we should all. <laughs> right? It's just like, I don't know. Waiting for more information. Who knows? Shame. I, I feel very sorry for him. My goodness. Find out. Uh, I was informed uh, through the phone call from Jennifer uh, that she was missing. Um, we weren't sure if uh, she was like actually missing or if she was staying at a friend's house at the time. We were trying to like wait to see if she showed up and by the second day I couldn't, I couldn't wait anymore. So I drove down to uh, Florida. I love what I had of her, but we were supposed to have so much more. And it's, I can't, I can't grasp it. I can't grasp it. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, Capital Callout says, I feel so sorry for him. Right. And you see, he got in his car and drove from, I think this is Texas, right? Did I hear that right? Whereas Stefan Stern sat on his ass and cried on media interviews and said, yeah, people are out there looking. He wasn't out there searching. <laughs> right. So, hmm. Okay. Now this is a body cam. As I say, I've just clipped it a bit because 34 minutes of it is very boring. <laughs> In my opinion, not much happens and we don't need to see him talk to this officer about freaking cough drops. And I don't know, man, how much snark we can handle because this guy. So yesterday we had a Patreon only live stream <laughs> towards the end. If you were there, you guys, you know, I was like, have you seen this body cam of this guy? <laughs> I could barely talk because it just makes me so angry when he's sitting there feeling sorry for himself like you know he's sleeping on a cold i don't know he's talking about the cold concrete floor and only having like a toilet roll and nothing else and later talks about um the music he likes and then talks about uh, working on a farm growing up on a farm things like that so it's a little bit deep left just so that we can hear a little bit but i must tell you make sure that your closed captioning is on in case it picks it up but it's very hard i've boosted it and tried to isolate the voices and all it's just it's you can hear more of the car than anything else. But I did want to show it to you. And I could also, if I feel like, wait, 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 I, I might need to just comment on it or say what he maybe said, I will pause the video and we can do that. So let's watch this. How's the 
temperature feel? Better than it was. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't don't know why they don't do that. You know, why don't why don't they just kind of like at least give you a blanket? You know. Oh, his core temperature was down. <laughs> That's what he said. My core temperature was down and it was like a degree or two lower than it should have been. That's what he says. Because they talk, I don't know, where where did they take his temperature? <laughs> did they take it when they're transferring him from one jail to the next? Wow. Wow. Did you hear that? The reason I'm pausing, if somebody can hear it very well, okay, don't get snarky, others can't hear, and I'm going to say what he said. So he said for the last few nights he's been sleeping on uh, metal and cold concrete and using a toilet roll as a pillow. I mean, did he do that or is he exaggerating? I have no idea. That sounds very exaggerated. I don't know if he did or didn't. But what gets me is that we've not seen him feel sorry for anyone but himself, right? The whole time. It's everyone else's fault, not his, on any of the interviews. And this is now, we're talking just about the charges that he is facing. He's not even, he hasn't been charged with murder. Won't be surprised if he is, obviously. But uh, sure, especially with all the lies of the timeline and everything, as we know, that's not just speculation. The timeline doesn't add up at all. And they saw him throwing Madeline's uh, backpack and laptop in a dumpster. They saw video evidence, is what the police said at press conferences, of Madeline in his car. It's actually his dad's car. But uh, and they believe she was deceased already. So it's really, sounds like what the police have is a lot of evidence to work with. But he's just feeling so very sorry for himself here, right? Begging for a blanket or a pad to sleep on for like two days. I think they were supposed to do something like that. <coughs> that sounds rough, man. to get back to a normal temperature? calling him out there. Tell, tell me, tell me what classical music is like Mozart, Beethoven. <laughs> are you sure, Stefan Stearns? <laughs> but okay, um, I see people are saying, you know, about the cop. I, th I think he's just, he's just making some conversation. You never, even maybe, maybe of course this will be part of the evidence. Like, how's he behaving? What does he talk about? What does he say? I can't believe that at, you know, towards the end of this, he talks about rocks in a dumpster on a farm where he worked at and that he, you know, Something tipped over and he fell in it. We're going to listen to that. Um, I've listened to it a few times before and I'm like, what? What is he talking about? The fact that he can actually talk about a, a dumpster, though. Damn, given the circumstances and the charges he's possibly facing soon. Well, within two years, they say, right? Oh, my. The evidence that they have against him, what he did with a dumpster. Oh, no, no. Don't say words like that, Stefan Stern. Sure. Uh, this was on March the 1st of 2024. I'm sure you could see on the top right-hand corner there. 
and it says Stefan Stone's transfer to Osceola County uh, from Orange County Jail. Okay, I wrote two, but I think he was transferred from one to the other. Yes, Osceola to Orange County Jail. I'll check. I'll double check that. Thank you, Beach Bum. I uh, really appreciate it. Let's continue to listen to this. You're the first one. I've never had anyone tell me classical music. And I actually like classical music. I do. I've never been to like like a like an orchestra or like like a like a like a like a concert like that. I've never been to one. Double checking myself from Osceola County to Orange County Jail. song but let's say November Rain right by Guns N' Roses what Slash does with the guitar towards the end of that that whole track he literally makes that guitar cry like it's one of those moments where you're like wow wow Metallica. Metallica is my all-time favorite. So Stefan Stones there was talking about classical music and then saying, um, I don't want to say the wrong word now. Don't know which band in the middle there. Sorry, I don't want to say the wrong band name. And then he talked about Queen as well and Metallica. Yeah, uh, Slash, there we go. I was like, Slash? Slayer? Slash. Slash, that one is what he talked about. So the cop was like, okay. Um, Queen, all of this. We don't, do we care what music he likes? Do we care? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Robin says, I cannot hear thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you what he's saying, right? Just so that you know, the general banter that's going on here in the car as we're watching this Stefan Stones trying to build some rapport or something. Queen is, yeah. I haven't seen their their that that latest movie with like like the 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 guy that uh, was on the sitcom. I haven't I haven't seen the the Queen movie yet. I even like Lincoln Park. Oh, this guy is gonna, he's gonna make me very angry. Oh, am I right? Are you also, I see some of you are like, my blood is boiling. This is too much, right? Now he's talking about Lincoln Park. How dare he talk about Lincoln Park? But he's talking about Lincoln Park and saying, what a shame. You know, what happened to Chester, Chester Bennington. Um, Stefan Stearns, mirror. Okay, just like, what a shame what you did. Leave Chester Bennington out of it, okay? Who allegedly took his own life. I love Lincoln Park too. One of my favorites. <laughs> so, yeah, hearing him talking about all this, oh my goodness. But he's just like, what a shame. What a shame. Again, I'm just like, okay, read the room. They should just say, read the room <laughs> all over this vehicle. Stefan, read the room. Stefan Stearns, okay. <laughs> Not our lovely Stefan. Okay. Along the same lines as uh, um, this guy from uh, Soundgarden. Um, I forgot his name. Um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then when he went over to Audio Slave, you ever heard Audio Slave? I mean, Audio Slave came out with like one album and it, 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 they just crushed it, crushed it. 
I do wonder if this police officer is trying to say certain, is it just banter? Is it just small talk on a general day? Or is he trying to get some information out of him? You know? <laughs> but classical music, wow. One type of music I never got into was country. I just can't relate to it. I grew up in the city, so not much that I can relate to to driving a tractor and stuff like that on some of the songs that I've heard. You grew up on a farm? Yeah. Wow. talking about growing up on a farm it was a love hate thing and something about horses now so listen carefully because it's very hard to hear right uh, barbara says i'm thinking this is banter for information let me say what i'm thinking if that's true if it could be banter for information and he specifically mentions lincoln park and then they're talking about chester bennington and chris cornell my thinking if it's if it's just banter it's just banter i would understand that right it could just be a normal day for this police officer just making small talk if they are trying to get any information out of him who knows if Stefan Stones would eventually try to say, because we expect it from people like that based on everything that was found on his phone and everything we know about him so far, am I right? We would expect him to victim blame to the max and be like, no, she, she took her own life or something like that. You know what I mean? So the conversation there is kind of interesting. Let's just hear what he says here. We don't have much more of this to watch. Don't worry. It's not the full half an hour. As I say, I've just taken out the clips where he actually talks a little bit Minus the cough drops. We didn't need to hear about Ricola and we love Ricola cough drops. <laughs> I've shown you them here because we get them here in Switzerland all over, right? <laughs> I know you get them too. I'm just saying. They talk about cough drops and back and forth. Anyway, we heard him have a pity party about sleeping on a toilet roll, which I don't know if that's true or not. That sounds strange. But uh, if true, maybe you should get a pillow. I don't know if he was on suicide watch or whatever it is. And now he's talking about farm life growing up and that his parents had a farm. So let's just hear this. So a wheelbarrow tipped over and and he fell into a dumpster that had horse poop in it. It's so weird, though, how he's feeling sorry for himself at age 10 or 11 here again, whereas the victim in this case had just turned 13. That's a bit odd. He's very disconnected from reality, right? He's just, like, very comfortable to talk about all this. I don't see anxiety here. Do you? But it stinks. Well, why did you work there? Was it like your, your family's farm? So you're from Georgia? So once we get here, I got to go into the interview room and I got to do the uh, arrest affidavit. Okay. Um, basically, you have two two warrants. So Just remember, this is from March 1st of 2024. So Madeline's body had not been found yet. It's always interesting to see these in hindsight, right? How these suspects 
talk, see the interviews and all of that. Wow. I'll let you know what those are. It was four days later when Madeline's body was found. So now we're going to hear some 911 calls that were recently released. Maybe you've heard them already. If you have, listen again. Let me know if there's anything that you pick up or want to discuss in chat. I'll be reading your comments as well. So maybe the police officer was, as we say, just also making conversation, you know, because at that point, actually, they, yeah, they hadn't found Madeline's body. So he's just making conversation to try to maybe even get a tip out of him somehow. Like where on earth, even though they had some video footage and things, they were still trying to find Madeline at that point that's scary oh my goodness sure so and I mean her body was found out in quite a rural area very close to where he had that uh, supposed you know he had to change his tire <laughs> still wonder if that was a ruse or if he really had to change his tire okay so now I've just put this on a little bit of footage here while we listen to the 911 calls so it would be Madeline Soto, I believe it's her aunt that, oh, f first it's her grandmother that calls, and then her aunt. And in the second call, it's her, Jen, her mother's in the background, you know? And it's it's quite interesting to hear, well, what was she wearing? And they're like, okay, we're trying to find out, we're trying to find out. At that point, it didn't sound like Jen was like saying exactly what she last saw her wearing, and I know the timeline is very sketchy, very sketchy, Okay. 911, what is the location of the emergency? Okay, what's going on? Do you need police fire or medical? No, it's not a medical issue. We we have a missing child since this morning. We already called three times. And the police didn't show up yet. Are you listening? Or yes. do you know? Okay. Yes. Okay. I see right here for you. Uh, Yes, ma'am. I see it. This is waiting for a deputy to respond. They haven't. They haven't come here yet. I, I'm aware, ma'am. I see it. I, it's waiting for a deputy to respond. You're waiting for a deputy to respond? Yes, ma'am. And how long? What do we need to wait? It's, it's a child missing. I understand that, ma'am, but I'm just not able to give an ETA. I, I'm, I don't know when they'll be there. So how long do we need to wait? This is I'm, an emergency. Ma'am, we we have the information, but it just it, they're trying to get there someone as soon as possible. So this is not important for you guys? Really? Man, we are very busy in the area. Look, I understand uh, they'll be there as soon as they can, okay? Hmm. <laughs> I like the grandmother's, uh, hmm, you know, not impressed, not impressed. Shit, the guy on the phone sounds very awkward, like, oh, man, we've got it, but we don't have a deputy to send out there right now. A little bit busy. Sorry about that. And they're like, what? Um, so... Just a crazy Swifty said, keeping him preoccupied during transport makes it safer for the police so his mind doesn't wander thinking about resisting or using violence. Good point. Good point as well. And Kim Top said the cop is not six years old. He's most probably met guys like this before. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And at that point, they really needed any information they could get to try to figure out where's Madeline. What did he do? Where did he put her body? They did eventually find that because after um, a press conference, there was actually a tipster that had watched that press conference and said, hey, based on what you just asked for information, this, this car and someone changing a tire, I saw that. Somebody saw him changing a tire somewhere, you know, along that road and he, and they actually pinpointed where the police went there, searched the area, and then they found Madeline's body. Oh my goodness. So press conferences are very important when they do have information to share with us. I say that because, wow, the last, the last press conference or two, no, there hasn't been much information, right? <laughs> People get very upset with it. I know they're just showing face, showing they're in control of this investigation. 
But I would say they, are, they don't have to do that for two years. If it's going to take two years, right, for more charges, there they could just do like a press release like they do sometimes in New York, like for the Long Island serial killer case. Sometimes they, they'll just put out a little press briefing, like a little note or a little Facebook post, right? You don't have to do a press conference every time. Otherwise, we're all like, what, what's new? And they're like, absolutely nothing. <laughs> we're just showing face. Okay, so that was, the, that was Madeline's grandmother calling. Now, I think it's her aunt speaking because I recognize her voice from this clip that I played before where she said she is not the type to run away. It used to be, it was in my intro that I played for the videos and other live streams that I made for you. So let's just have a listen uh, to what they say. 911, what is the location of your emergency? Um, okay, police are medical. Hi, um, I called not that long ago reporting a missing child. I just wanted to know how long the cops are going to take to get here. Okay, hold on, let me open up the call and let's see. The call is still currently pending to have the deputies respond out there, but we don't have any available deputies. We still have the call up though, holding. Okay, so, so no one's on their way yet? Not yet, no. Mm, does it take long for them to respond to the call? If there's a big emergency in the area um, and there's nobody, there's no units available, they put the calls on hold. But as soon as one becomes available, they respond to the next pressing call. Okay, yeah, uh, we just need one here urgently. So I understand. Um, we still have the call. We still have the call holding. Okay. Is Yes. Yep, we still have the call holding for them. I'll go ahead and update them with the information. All right, thank you, because this happened yeah. very recently, so we just want to get everyone here. She's been missing since 8 a.m., so we want to get everything done as soon as possible to try to find her. I understand. Okay. Thank Hello. you. 911. Okay, now there's another call. Uh, Jean says, why didn't the mom call? It's a very good question. Oh, she's in the background. I don't know if she was freaking out, too anxious, busy with something else. I'm not sure, but yeah, Jen did not make the calls. What's the location of your emergency? Um, it's... And is there a specific apartment number, ma'am? Uh, it's... And do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, police, possibly. I'm reporting a missing child. Okay, and... What is the name of the business there, ma'am? The business? Um, okay. And the child that you're trying to report missing, are you calling on behalf of the of the parent? Yes, yes, on behalf of the mother. She's like, okay. Okay. And then so, and ma'am, how old is the child? She's... And could I go ahead and get her name? Yes, it's... And is she white, black, or Hispanic? She's white. Okay. Blonde and hair, dirty blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay. Hold on with me here. And then what color shirt and pants was she last seen wearing? Um, hold on, let me ask. Then um what color shirt and like what was she last wearing? Hold on, uh, we're finding out. Okay. See, I can't hear exactly what Jen says in the background because uh, the lady on the phone said, okay, Jen, what was she last wearing? And then you hear some talking in the background, but I'm not too sure what she says, but they're like, okay, okay, we, we're finding out. There's some strange words in these calls, right? As well as um, we're just getting everything done and I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying not to read too much into it. Just like, oh, 911 call. Don't know why the mom didn't make it. I'm not trying to raise too many red flags about her, although, I mean, the the timeline just doesn't add up. It just doesn't. The things that Jen Soto said, it just, no, no. There's things there that don't make sense according to the press conference and the evidence that the police have. So. And then how long has it been, though, since you guys have last seen her? Since this morning. She was dropped off um, at school this morning, and apparently she never showed up. We called um, everyone we knew. No one's seen her. Okay. And then, so, ma'am, I just want to confirm, though, was she last seen from this address? Oh. Is this where you guys last saw her? No, 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 no. Um, she was last seen at the church next to Honey's Creek Middle School. I think it's called Peace Church. See, even that, no, 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 she was last seen at. 
Sure, she wasn't last seen at that address. I just wonder, really, when Madeline's mother last saw her. Uh, Rachel said, how did mom know what she was wearing? Didn't she see her? She didn't see her in the morning, right? She apparently did. She says that she saw her get dressed in the morning, and that's the problem. And the time that she said also doesn't make sense because the police say they already saw Madeline deceased in Stefan's car at that time. When the mom says, no, she woke up, but she got dressed. And I saw her get dressed, and she was wearing this and this and this. Oh, dear. You know, and I wonder, we speculated this before, I wonder if the police sent over the media, probably, to get those interviews very quickly, the day after Madeline was reported missing, because I think it's going to be some some great evidence as well as to what Stefan Stones was doing and saying and, you know, how he was behaving in the background and possibly also what Jen Soto was saying in the timeline, right? Because, uh, of course, they didn't know then that they had all the um, evidence that they already were piecing together, right? So... I'm not sure if the exact address... Uh, she was wearing a dark green hoodie, I believe. What is the name of the church? Uh, I think it's called, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Peace Church. It's the one right next to Hunters Creek Middle School. It's the, well, no, no, no. Got it. it. It's across the street school. from it? Um, I, I believe so, yeah. There's, there's two. I just forgot about the other one. It's not Focal Point Church. It's um, well. Is it Peace United Methodist Church? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. It's that one. Okay. Is she diagnosed with any medical mental conditions at all? Um, I know she takes medication for ADHD. And I think that I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. And I'm just wondering if she does, because Jen didn't seem too sure about that, right? ADHD, possibly being on the autism spectrum, but then also not. You know what I mean? Remember we saw that in the interview? So I'm just guessing that this is her aunt based on the voice that I kind of recognize, but I'm not actually too sure who this lady is that called. I don't think it's been confirmed. Either way, yeah, it's quite concerning. That uh, as uh, someone said earlier, sorry, now I missed that comment. You said, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, Zulik Kowalski said, I think that Jen told her mom and sister that she called 911, but really didn't. That is also a possibility. My goodness. I wonder though, my question is, based on that fuzzy timeline, I wonder if Stefan went to the birthday party, wherever it was. I think it was at the grandmother's house, right? Jen said she couldn't make it, she was working, but she works from home, so that's odd. <laughs> okay, so if she works from home, and she said, I couldn't make it, I was working, so you were home. So Madeline went to a birthday party. There's a, little, a few little clips um, that are out there from that party as well. Stefan was apparently there, because in the interview he said, yeah, we all had a great time, it was her party, and I'm like, oh, uh, okay. So maybe he was there, then where did he go with Madeline? That's my question. Where did he go? Because I don't know if, if I don't know if Jen saw her after that. I don't know. We will find out one day, I would assume. Sorry, bear with me here. And is she known to carry anything on her person, like a pocket knife, a pepper spray, anything at all like no, that? No, okay. no, nothing like that. Does she have a cell phone that she might keep on her person? She doesn't. She had one when she left at home conveniently today. Okay. Okay. And ma'am, what is your name? My name is... Okay, perfect. Thank you. And just so we recognize you when we arrive there, though, at the advanced come meet with you guys. Are you, ma'am, white, black, Indian, Asian, or Hispanic? I'm Hispanic. And what color shirt and pants will you be wearing? Uh, pants, dark wash jeans. Uh, I have a green cardigan on and a white shirt. Thank you. And I just need to verbally confirm as all the
Do you have any at all weapons on your person? No, I this dispatcher is very sweet, right? Uh, too much mom said question. Has it been substantiated that the item Stones was putting in the dumpster were Madeline's current book bag or was he just observed putting something in the dumpster and it was presumed? The police said at the press conference that it that it was Madeline's backpack with her school-issued laptop and they were able to retrieve those items. So that is what they said at the press conference. Okay. Okay. All right. And are you going to be waiting for us inside? Um. Yeah. Uh. I'll probably I'll come outside. I just go see through glass. I'll see when you guys show up. Okay. Perfect. Then. So then I'll get a call place for service. We'll have deputies out there to the to come and make a report with you and to come and assist with trying to find your. Okay. Okay. Her mother and my. Um. They're going to the school to double check and everything, but from what we know, she wasn't there, so they should okay. be back soon, too, because it's right next to the that's, school. Yeah, that's fine. So if, if at least one of you remains there, though, at, to meet with an officer, that's more than fine, okay? Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here. Okay, then. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am, and I'll go ahead and let you go. We'll be out there as quickly as we can, okay? Okay. Yeah. Well, uh... Ava, Ava says, even her aunt says, conveniently, with respect to Maddie forgetting her phone at home that day. Man, there's a lot of interesting choices of words. Kimberly Dini said, she said, conveniently, today. Okay, I think I just have the, it's like a tribute that I made for uh, Maddie. It, it was also my intro, so I'm going to play that now. All right, bye-bye, ma'am. Thank you so much, bye-bye. Okay, almost there. I really don't think she would have ever done anything like that. See that lady's voice. I was thinking it could be this lady who's her aunt. And Jen Soto said that it was her, Jen Soto's sister, that was out there um, at the church and that the police were describing what they saw on the video, the grainy video, which they couldn't conf confirm was Madeline. And according to the timeline, it wasn't. It wasn't, right? So just to pick up and run away with no trace of anything. She was, she was really talkative. She's nice. But just to see what happened and how many cool people we have in this world is really devastating. Because she was only 13 and she lost her life at a young age. Nobody like expected that something like this would happen. And it was like a, like a, like a hole is missing because everybody at school even, they're like sad on Monday and Friday teachers were crying. Everybody's like sad about it, so to get justice, it would like, there's still gonna be a hole in people's hearts, but it might close it a bit more just if there's justice. So that's what I have for you today. Let me make myself a bit bigger here. Man, this case really is very heartbreaking. It makes me very sad, right? Oh my word, I know many cases. All these cases we talk about are sad. Just some are just, oh man, this is so devastating. Uh, Shauna said, do you know how long it took for law enforcement to show up after the first 911 call? I really don't know exactly how long. But I think, I think based on the timeline we looked at before, it was within maybe an hour or so. But I'm not 100% sure. Okay, because this was uh, these 911 calls were released uh, by mainstream media that I saw. So I, I don't have it directly from the police with the exact timestamps and everything. Otherwise, I definitely would have put that on the screen. Uh, so if you want to refresh uh, your recollection, so they say in trials, right? You want to refresh your recollection. If you want to refresh your memory just on the timeline and what happened in this case, and, you know, this going from a missing person's case and then suddenly becoming a homicide investigation. Then I do have a playlist for you. You could check out all the videos I made for you, the YouTube shorts. And of course, we've looked at all the interviews. So sometimes I find myself rewatching those interviews as well. I'm just being like, just still thinking about this case because there's no answers yet. And it's unusual, of course. Usually we'd see that, wow, okay, they found 
the body and then they charge someone with murder. But it doesn't always happen like that. They are making sure that they are going to investigate this properly, take their time and make sure that everyone, whether it's one person, two, more, I don't know, a group, how do we know? Whoever needs to be prosecuted then will be charged and prosecuted. So we will wait and see. We shall be patient. If there's any more uh, press conferences or you know, if there's any other news, then I'll keep you posted as well. Make sure you check my community tab because I regularly update you guys there as well. I see a lot of people miss that. So I know many of you watch on TVs. I think it's like 35% or so of people watch on uh, TVs as well. So maybe I think then you can't find my community tab so easily. If you're ever then on your phone on the YouTube app, just have a scroll on my channel, go to the community tab and you'll see some updates there as well. Wendy, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. For um, today, I really wanted to show you Madeline's biological father's interview, which obviously is very heartbreaking. Um, sending family and friends of Maddie lots of love, lots of courage. I know it's going to take so much patience as they investigate this. That must also be really hard, right? To be like, okay, they found her body. She was murdered. They say in an act of domestic violence, not releasing, of course, maybe the family knows, you know, the cause of death. But who's going to who's gonna pay the price, right? Uh, Mikael, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, happy Saturday to you. I know it's, it's, a, it's a sad topic, but I hope that you have a good Saturday afternoon or evening or whatever it is, and I will see you again very soon. Thank you so much, Mons. Bye, everyone. <laughs>